YouTube, I don't know about you, but my life is filled with a ton of excitement for things that I see online. Oh my god! Wow! I'm just kidding, it's actually filled with a lot of dismay. I've talked about this many times in videos, how there's unrealistic standards for men, women, and just about anybody in between, because there's a lot of those now. You have dudes taking steroids, publishing this content to minors, to a point in which there's 15-year-olds taking trend openly on Instagram now. You also have females on Instagram or TikTok posting about their glute routines and saying that their butt's all natural, well, simultaneously, they really got BBLs a couple years ago. <laughs> So what I'm looking at today is an influencer called Lisa De Piero. Piero? Piero. Lisa De Piero. Pedro, 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 Pedro. Surprisingly, she does not have an OnlyFans in her bio, which is, I think, the first time I've ever looked at a female influencer without an OnlyFans. Like, incredible. But going forward, she is doing huge hip thrusts, supposedly lifting a ton of weight, claiming that she's a gym girl and she built her physique naturally. But you can see right there, smack dab in the comments with 5,000 likes, got a BBL and then pretended to be a gym girl. <laughs> Another comment just below that. I wish they could tag the doctor instead of fooling with us. <laughs> These people are ruthless. How the fuck are you gonna get a BBL and then post tips on how to grow your glutes? So again, I wanna be very clear. This girl claims to have no BBL and that she built her physique completely naturally. Oh, these comments are so funny. And this one, she says, I love jeans as she's walking down the street and just like whips her head back looking at the camera all mysteriously. The fucking comments are unreal. BBL is real, one of the first comments. It looks like a toddler's poopy diaper. Your diaper is full. <laughs> and there's like the dead giveaway for me, which is the proportions of her body. You can definitely tell she's got like a muscular physique. She has abs and all these other things, uh, which she posts on many pictures. But it's also very clear that she's not really well developed in any particular area outside of her gluteus maximus, which isn't developed, it's just artificially inflated, just like the economy. So, I mean, yeah, she's pretty fit, but she's like, as the comment says, BBL working overtime. And again, in one of her earliest posts here, we can see that this is at a point she claims she would never do a BBL. This is a completely natural booty transformation. She is completely 100% just natty, working at the gym through like everybody else and just putting in the work. Typical grift that we see from influencers, especially ones that are using steroids and don't want to admit it or using body enhancements like a BBL and don't want to admit it. And why might she be doing this and also simultaneously claiming that she's not doing anything that would be enhancing to her physique, you might ask. And the question is simple because the link in her bio is related to a coaching link. She's trying to sell you programs or butt building stuff. It's called LDP workouts. Essentially, it is, you know, you could pay basically $50 and get a four day a week guide for 12 weeks. You could pay another $50 and get a busy girl guide, gym edition. You get the booty challenge for 12 weeks for $50. And it just goes on and on and on. No shot. No shot is this client's transformation photo real. And look, what's sad about this is there's no shortage of people who buy into the hype. She's got 1.7 million followers on Instagram, and she's able to sell these programs with efficiency, as well as companies are sponsoring her for her content. And I don't really think you understand how actually fucked up that is. Because if we zoom way out on the whole grand scheme of things and look at the messaging behind this content and what it really means for people who are viewing it. In my mind, at least, it shows a couple things to young females who might be looking at this person as someone they want to look like, which is one, to be successful, drive nice cars, have nice clothes, wear cool jewelry that's all really expensive and what she shows in her photos. You need to look like this, have perfectly glowing skin, always done makeup, always perfect straight hair, always the best outfits, huge boobs, and a massive booty, and then you know, obviously the disillusion here is that they can get this stuff naturally. And then if they simply can't, when they'll soon find out they can't, they'll be disappointed to the maths and just give up. But also what this does is it sets highly unrealistic expectations for those young females looking on. And I'm talking about an Instagram platform, which a good majority of the audience is young people. It's under the age of 20. And if you're considering that these young individuals are watching this content and getting basically bombarded with it, at the end of the day, your algorithm is comprised of the 
things you view most. And if you're viewing something like this, well, the algorithm is going to recommend you some more big booty bitches. And so these young females just see this stuff, buy into the hype, buy her programs, look for results, don't get them and feel extremely disappointed and underwhelmingly a human. And that is a disgusting thought. Now you might say it's consumerism and the viewer has an opportunity to choose what they consume. But I would argue just like you, you probably open up Instagram, you have someone who is an idol or some people who you see as the version of yourself that you want to be all over there. And it's no different. I just talked about morning routines and how those can sort of be a, a delusion of grandeur for some people because they think that their mornings have to be this perfectly sculpted thing and they have to have all these different products to have the perfect morning. And the messaging behind it is that, yeah, if you don't have these products, you're garbage. And this is no different. It creates such an unreal idea of what a female body should look like. Yeah, you and I might be able to realize the complete falsity behind everything that she's publishing, but there's 1.7 million people following her. If we just say that 500,000 of those people see the bullshit for what it is, that's great, but there's still over a million people who are willing to follow this person, pay for her stuff, and view her on a daily basis. And it's far from her being the only one. This is a mass Instagram slash influencer problem, and I get it, right? You have to have the highly marketable physique, the highly marketable body to make money in cash. It's, it's a game of competition after all, but when you're starting to artificially inflate things and use waste filters, which we see all the time, use BBLs to leverage your fitness business or other things, it's definitely more corrupt than it is good. And at a certain point, where does that expectation for other females end? Because her bios is from skinny to fit. But in reality, like she is still extremely skinny. And the only thing that's quote unquote, what people would consider spit is her butt cheeks that are completely filled with plaster. And it's very clear. I'm not the only one that thinks she is not necessarily the fittest physique. She's just, you know, hyper underfed. Because if you look at this photo with her saying waiting for food, one of the comments is, are you sure you're waiting for food? Meanwhile, all she's doing is taking pictures with a see-through shirt on, trying to, I don't know, be something she's not. And likely that's probably the only meal she ate for the day too. And I'm sure that a lot of you might be, well, Colton, here's the fucking incel, blah, blah, blah. And Claw at it! <laughs> You can think that that's actually kind of fair, but the, the reality of what I'm saying is that there is a societal impact that people like this make, whether they see it or not. It is a congruency within all influencers in a certain way, like Toji talking about steroids super favorably, gambling and doing drugs. People like that content. And then guess what? We have 15 year olds doing trend balloons. So if you tell me that people aren't influenced by influencers, I would say you're wrong. And the societal impact is quite large. I talked about this in my sort of physique inflation video where I discussed like how much more demanding being a fitness influencer has become and what the standard is these days compared to 10 or 15 years ago. While I do like the message of working out, being healthy, eating right, I don't think there's much of that message here because quite literally all she's doing for the most part is publishing photos of herself, doing different things, and then maybe an occasional workout video. And working out is obviously very preferable and I think everyone should should do it, it's giving the wrong message because all of her workouts are comprised of basically hip thrusts, like really shitty pull-ups and take 20,000 repetitions of gym selfies. So for the average girl that sees this, she sees a hyper skinny individual with a large gluteus maximus and then assumes, okay, well, she doesn't really share too much of her eating. And when she does, it's basically one meal. That's it. And she's posing next to the meal. Her workouts consist of mostly glute workouts with a couple pull-ups every now and and then and that's about it and she thinks that hey this is all i need to do so she goes into the gym with the expectation that i only need to train a couple times and all i need to do is glute workouts all i need to do is maybe some upper body workouts like pull-ups which are optimal and just eat less overall which I, I argue is probably not good for most females they arguably need to eat more to sustain a higher lean body mass index and that would therefore lead to a leaner physique yeah i just think it's self-destructive to the people who are following this kind of content whether you agree with me or not that's fine it is what it is. Either way, this is tomfoolery in my book. Maybe it's not in yours. Give you me a good old rub. That's it. Nice and hot. <laughs> yeah, boy.